in guitar in Dorsey, and Dorsey. Yeah. Even my very first professional photo was me holding a Dean. So before wow. I was famous, I used Dean. I, right. I like them because there are many good guitar companies. Right. And it's very hard nowadays not to find, to find a bad guitar, even at low prices. Hmm. But Dean is an innovative company. The owner of the company plays bass. He's a really great musician, mm -hmm. and he's a great businessman. Mm -hmm. But they do things that were different. Mm -hmm. They make super uh, high-quality USA guitars. Mm -hmm. Even their less expensive guitars sound really good because they care about the quality of it. Mm -hmm. And they were innovative. They, mm -hmm. they did shapes that were unique. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they did things with pickups that were unique. They mm -hmm. built my very first style guitar. Oh. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. so I really love the company. It's not just an endorsement. I really love the guitars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm left-handed, so I write left-handed, but I play right-handed guitar. Okay. Guitar is one of the only instruments in the world that offers a choice. Mm. I mean, think of a sitar. Right. Are there left-handed sitars? No. Mm. Are there left-handed pianos? Um, drums can be left-handed because mm. you can arrange the drums. Mm. But when you think of a symphony orchestra, mm. not one instrument except cymbals uh, can, can be left-handed or, or, or only percussion instruments. Mm -hmm. Violins, no left-handed. So um, w when I was growing up, I played right-handed because mm -hmm. that's what I could get. Right. Um, they didn't have the amount of left-handed guitars they have today. Mm -hmm. But I saw a jazz artist named Rassan Roland Kirk okay. when I was about 11 years old. Oh, yeah. I was watching him on television. Mm -hmm. A blind black guy, old guy. Okay. And he was playing the saxophone, All right. and at the end of his concert, he put two saxophones on and played both at the same time. Okay. And um, so I said to myself, I'm going to do that on a guitar, but I'm not going to make, those were two right-handed saxophones, it wasn't righty and lefty, uh -huh. but I said, I'm not going to do the Jimmy Page style double neck, two Double neck, neck yeah. I'm going to make it like this. So okay. when I was a boy, I had the idea, and then it wasn't until I was... Uh, through at school at the university that I was to the point where I could actually have Dean Guitars make it. Oh. But I, I approached Dean, that was the first mm. company. You know, I've done, uh, when I play like my over-under technique, I invented that too. Mm. I wanted to do things that were different, mm. that were innovative. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be, I didn't want to be like other people. Mm. And, and I never felt, how, how could I play uh, Jimi Hendrix as good as Jimi Hendrix could play Jimi Hendrix. Right. You can't be better than the original. Mm -hmm. You could. So I, I wanted to be like the originals and be myself. Well, I think when, when a person plays in concert, mm -hmm. um, not everybody needs to move around. Mm -hmm. But if I found in music, generally speaking, mm -hmm. if you have really good music mm -hmm. and you have something unique, the way you present your music to people, mm -hmm. you have a good chance of making it. Okay. You know, I mean, there's so many great guitarists that just stand there and mm -hmm. you're like, you know, they're really good, but it, they don't do anything to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the uh, the the goal, in my in my opinion, mm -hmm. is to play really good, mm -hmm. but find that way to reach the people. Mm -hmm. So, see, what, and again, when I did this, there were people smashing guitars. Play, everybody was copying someone else, right. and I'm left-handed. This is where my left hand, right. and and I started doing this, and people liked it. So, uh -huh. I I learned, I figured it out on stage, mm. and, and wow. uh, so. But it, it's it makes me again. It makes me different. Right. So I stand out. That that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. In Chicago, oh, yeah. I lived in LA for a long time. There are so many clubs mm. to play. There's bands all the time, and so. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are popular now. We're, we're in a different era in music. Mm -hmm. In the United States, when I was coming up, rock music was all over the radio. Right. It's not like that anymore. Mm -hmm. But see, it wasn't like that in the beginning either. Okay. A and uh, so, well, I take that back. It was. But the Black Sabbaths and Judas Priest never really were on the radio that much. Mm -hmm. But they still became huge. Mm -hmm. But um, the scene when I was growing up, I lived in L.A. during the height of the L.A. era of the 80s. So... It was fantastic, mm -hmm. and, and the best of the best mm -hmm. was out there. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's still very good today. I mean, look at all the good musicians here. I'm here, of course. You know, so of course. India's emerging as a really great uh, country for music, mm -hmm. uh, and we're gonna we're gonna help that. Right. I was influenced by more, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, a technical right. guitar. So, like, I want I listen to more jazz players and guitars that had really great technique. Like, if I wanted to hire a guitarist to play a symphonic piece, mm. 
you know, uh, that's the kind of music that I liked, okay. you know, more progressive rock. Mm -hmm. So I wanted the best musicians, and I wanted to be that way myself. Mm -hmm. But I love Van Halen, but it's not a style I tried to copy, because yeah. it really, it's not me, mm -hmm. it's him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Al Di Miola, mm -hmm. um, John McLaughlin, mm -hmm. uh, a guitarist named Alan Holdsworth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, I thought they were technically better. Okay. You know, I, because... It's one thing to write great music. Hmm. It's another thing to be a great musician. Right. They're they're two different things. Right. Kurt Cobain was a great artist, hmm. but he wasn't a great guitar player. Right. But in every other genre of music, hmm. you have great hmm. writing, hmm. and the musicians are right up there. Right. So I looked at guitar players that I, I in my opinion, hmm. were as good as the music that was being written. Hmm. That's all I did. Hmm. I didn't grow up being wanting to be the fastest. Okay. I never did. Okay. Uh, I want to be as fast as I need to be. Mm. But in, when, I, when I was coming up in the L.A. scene, mm. there were so many great guitar players, and I had the ability to do it. And I was faster than most of them. Mm. So um, it's oh. just something that any really great musician can, can do it. Mm. A and so I, I use that part of my playing to enhance what I want to enhance. Right. And, and it, for me, it's like driving a Lamborghini, cool. you know, uh, you know, 300, you know, kilometers, you know, an hour or 400 or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it feels good. Mm -hmm. I have a new album that just was released okay. April 14th right. called Shred Force One. It debuted at number 11 on the Billboard charts and right. the Hard Rock, a really mm -hmm. big, mm -hmm. it, it did, it's doing really well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's good. Mm -hmm. I, I can't complain.